for women to get jobs. Why? Why did we do that? I am so tired. I want to just put my feet up. Like, I am... Oh my god. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, <laughs> you know, my... I don't even know where to start this damn thing. Uh, why is it that so many people whether it's Ben Shapiro, Critical Drinker, which I have a couple of video clips from, uh, normies, conservatives, why is anybody seriously surprised that the Barbie movie is 100% anti-man? They, they reference the patriarchy, they show young children, like little five and six-year-olds smashing dolls against the rocks, telling them that they, they shouldn't be moms. I mean... And and you, this isn't a movie for us. Let's face it. But but I'm surprised. So many people are like, "Oh my gosh, how is it possible that Hollywood hates men this much, and that that feminist movie would come out like this?" And on top of that, of course, it's going to make zillions of dollars because because the marketing team fooled everybody and made it seem like it was a like a a, a movie for kids, uh, you know, for young girls about Barbie, and. Just so they're going to make tons of money from a bunch of duped idiots. I I got a couple of articles to articles to read. I'm just I'm just amazed people are still surprised Hollywood is this awful uh, towards men. It's it's like they haven't been paying attention to anything for the last three years. Um, so here's critical drinkers um, who I enjoy very much. Nerdrotic, like all the all the usuals, really got fooled by this, and and I'm. I'm genuinely surprised. Uh, here's the first clip, clip from Critical Drinker. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the hard work and genius PR campaign of the Warner Brothers marketing department. You guys really pulled off a miracle with this one, successfully duping all of us, including me, into believing that Barbie was going to be just another colourful, light-hearted, easy-going family comedy with some cheeky, self-aware humour. Here's what's funny, right? Um, a couple articles came out and some of the actresses and the, somebody else, I forget who it was, mentioned that this is a kind of a, a, an empowering feminist movie. And the movie studio came out and said, no, it's not. No, it's not. Don't talk about that. Shut up. And they did shut up. And they fooled everybody. Well, except us, because we know what Hollywood's like and what women are like today. Um, so they did a great marketing job. And because of this, there's not going to be any backlash until after people go and see it and after it has probably a $150 million weekend. I don't know how much the money this cost, but this movie's probably, at least in the first week or so, going to make a ton of money. And it'll make a ton of money from, you know, the femoids and the left on, that, that really like to trash on men. So I'm sure it's going to do fine. Um, but the whole point is, again, you know, the whole reason I'm doing this movie or this video, because none of us care about this movie, is how much normies and even other people's head are in the sand about how much men are hated by the media, by feminists, by our governments, by the movie industry, by every journalist that's out there. Like It, it just blows my mind that, that everybody just constantly doesn't understand that this is a full-on attack on men that, that is going out across the globe. They just don't see it. We see it. We talk about it all the time here. But there's so many people that are like, oh, well, you know, Hollywood's going to Hollywood, but, you know, there's there's still shining moments. No, not really. Not really. That's why I'm hoping with this writer and the, what is it, the writer and actor strike, I hope there's a purge. I hope Hollywood gets rid of all of these lazy, awful writers and actors that have these agendas. They get rid of them and we can go back to some normalcy. Uh, but, you know, because this obviously was made over the last what, year or two, yeah, this isn't a, it's not like they can make a movie in 15 minutes. Ironic meta gags and probably capped off with a blandly inoffensive female empowerment message about girls learning the value of their own potential. What none of us expected was 114 minutes of spiteful, bitter, mean-spirited, borderline unhinged hatred of men and ev We We all expected it. We knew it was coming, 100%. Everything even vaguely associated with them. So 
he, and, and I'm going to play this Ben Shapiro clip. Same thing. Now, both these guys paid money to go see this. And this is what, you know, I understand when you're like, hey, you know what? I make my money. Like Critical Drinker, he's got like 1.7 million um, subscribers. And I think this video was out an hour ago, and he's gotten 140,000 views on it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. I like Critical Drinker. So I don't blame him for spending the 10 or 15 bucks so he can do a review because that's how he makes his money. But other than that, all these, you know, conservatives or normies or moms or whatever that are taking their kids out to this stuff, expecting to have a fun tongue-in-cheek Barbie movie, man, they, this is why so many, this is why so many, I, I would say, non-informed people and even conservatives, this is why they lose the culture war. They don't pay attention to things. The left hyper-focuses on everything. And if one thing goes out, the message spreads like wildfire they get it out. They, the people will pick up the phone and call newspapers and call movie theaters and call um, various outlets. They'll call advertisers and run a cancel campaign. Like the left is all in and conservatives are like, or, or at least let me say 90% of most normal people will say, I just want to be left alone. That's not how this works. Like if you're in a, a, a battle for culture and a battle for where the country is going to go, you can't, that's, that's like that's like an invading army up on your border. And you're like, well, I'm, I don't want to pay attention to them. Like, they'll go away. Man, you're going to get overrun. And this is what's happening. And, and men have been getting overrun. And, and, because, and I'm that same guy. I'm the same guy that's like, I don't want to get involved in this stuff. I don't want to talk about it. Just leave me alone. And they keep advancing and advancing and advancing until they've got a boot on your face. Let me begin with my generalized assessment of the movie. This movie is not just a piece of shit. This movie is a flaming piece of dog shit piled atop an entire dumpster on fire, piled atop a landfill filled with dog shit. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. On every possible level, it is a horrific movie. The only thing that can be said for this film is production design. And that's Ben's take on it. So uh, here's from uh, The Daily uh, Septic. Barbie is a deeply anti-man movie in which every male character is either an idiot, bigot, or a loser. How predictable was it that the new Barbie film would be a vehicle for the worst anti-man prejudices of the modern era with every male character, either an idiot, I read that part. Sarah Vine, who gives her verdict in the mail, says that she feels sorry for those who subscribe to this nonsense and for the young men growing up in a world that tells them they're worthless. And I have that article that they're referencing there. Um, Let's see. Uh, they go into the story here a little bit, and I'm not going to read that because who cares? Um, and they say it only goes further, confirm the infamous double, double standards of a woke culture where despite the railing against oppressive stereotypes, all the worst stereotypes are leveled to any demographic group, men, white people, older people, as seen as failing into the, the facile privileged class. So here's the article that she was referencing, and this is a woman. Uh, so this is Sarah Vine for the Daily Mail. Uh, Barbie review with Sarah Vine, the mother and daughter verdict that every man in this film uh, is a bigot or loser. My daughter totally loved it. So, of course, the daughter is, I don't know, I don't know what her age is. Uh, you can see the daughter here. She looks like, uh, this Sarah Vine looks like, I forget the woman's name that played um, in the Adams family as uh, um, a Gomez, the Gomez wife. Uh, gosh. Angelica Houston, I think her name is. She kind of looks like her a little bit, but a bit younger. Of course, so of course the daughter loved it. Um, but the mom actually has a decent take on it. Uh, she said uh, every one of the screens in the whole movie theater had been commandeered by Barbie. I took my daughter, B, 20, with me, partly because she nagged me half to death about coming, partly as an unsullied Gen Z counterpoint to my grumpy mommy stance on Barbie. Despite the tagline, if you hate Barbie, this is a film for you. I didn't really think I was likely to be the target audience, and so it transpired. She loved every second of it, me not so much. Now, I have another video I'm going to be doing, which is is this one. Gen Z might turn out okay after all. That's a kind of a fun one. That's going to be a fun story, which is a counterpoint to this uh, Gen Z young woman's take on it, which was, it was awful. They say, uh, for sure, Mattel is superficially mocked in the shape of a bumbling CEO. Okay, they, I don't care about the story. She says, but my main objective is that Barbie isn't really a film about Barbie at all. 
It's one hour and 54 minutes of ex extended misandry dressed up with a few fun dance routines and one or two granted fairly decent jokes. It's a deeply anti-man movie, an extension of all that TikTok feminism that paints any form of masculinity other than the most adonine, uh, adon, ad, anodyne, geez, uh, other than the most anodyne as toxic predatory and frames women's liberation as not only a movement based on achieving equality between the sexes, but as a cultural revenge vehicle designed to write men out of the story altogether. Every male character is awful, uh, rather a pathetic loser. If the roles were reversed and a male director made a film about how all women were hysterical, neurotic, gold-digging witches, would it be denounced? It would be denounced, quite rightly, as deeply offensive and sexist. In a nutshell, uh, Barbie and Ken set off on a, uh, I, I don't care about the story. That's the whole point here. Uh, they keep talking about the story here. Um, so here's the whole point of this, right? It's not about the movie. We know what, we know the movie. It's the point that it, if you go back to the 70s, even the 60s, women had good roles in movies. And, and when I say 70s, we'll even start, uh, what I'm mostly thinking of is um, uh, uh, Ripley, right, in the Aliens series. Sigourney Weaver was written as a, just a research woman, you know, a woman that was scared out of her mind, right, of everything that was happening. But by the end of the movie, she had, she had grown, she had strengthened, she had become brave. It showed a, a, an arc of everyday woman becomes hero, it is one of, if not the top voted horror movie or, you know, alien sci-fi horror movie of all time. And it showed a woman in a very strong position. That was in the 70s. Since then, we've had women in movies uh, being strong and, and awesome, but the men were too. And now today, it seems the only way the women can continue showing that they're strong and and powerful and brave and awesome is that they're better than the men. Not just that, but the men are incompetent and they're fools and they're idiots and they're awful and all the things that this movie brings out. They do, and, and you know, I could be a, a record on skip for a lot of this stuff because for years we've talked about how in, in commercials and just in everything, men are just horrible. But what blows me away out of all of this is that people are still surprised that the, the, the critical drinker and some of these, I knew this was going to be a movie like this, even when they were screaming, oh, it's not a feminist movie. Shut up. Just go watch it. It's about kids and women. This movie isn't made for people like us, but I knew, I knew it was going to be bad. I had no idea it was going to be this bad, obviously, but there's so many normies out there that just don't pay attention. And they don't see, some people see it, but a lot of people just don't pay attention. They go, oh, it's a one-off. Oh, that's whatever for that movie. Ah, oh, it's one-off for that commercial. Oh, it's one-off for that song. Oh, it's one-off for that law that's been passed. Oh, it's one-off for that divorce. Oh, it's one-off for, no, no, no. It's pervasive now. It's in everything. And when so many people, whether it's, again, conservatives or or some of the content creators out there that are like, you know what, you just need to find yourself a good woman. You just need to get out there. Let me tell you something, man. I've got another video coming up here that I'm going to be dropping today. This woman, uh, this nightmare wife shows how bad marriage can really be. It's another story. But the point is, it's story after story after story after story after story. And law after law and commercial and movie and everything over and over and over constantly for years now about how awful men are. And, and eventually, yes, everybody will be like, oh my gosh, wow, okay, I'm on board with you guys. But, but for a long time, there are content creators uh, that were removed for YouTube for talking about this stuff. Some of the early on kind of red pill guys, they were removed for this. Now there's so many channels talking about it. I think YouTube's like, you know, we're going to let this stuff slide because otherwise we're going to use, lose millions of dollars in revenue. So I think they let, they let us talk about it now. Why also? Because it's true. It's obvious. It's staring you right in the face. And you certainly can't 
you certainly can't lie about it anymore. It's here. So, you know, once again, people are shocked that man-hating is a thing and it's popular and it's been going on for a long time. I don't know. I thought I just wanted to get on here and rant. And I'm not even yelling at the movie. I knew the movie was going to be like this. I'm yelling at the people that thought this was going to be like a fun movie for for moms and their kids. No way. No way. Um, sounds like the rain is coming down now. So I will put my recording on pause. I'll get another video out to you as soon as the rain stops and there's not a bunch of white noise behind me. That's what I get for living in a metal building out in the woods. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one.